Hey, we will start on the underwriting model tab. This tab is the tab you do all of your underwriting work in. It's one page underwriting and really the underwriting that happens within five sections, which is the deal assumptions, unit mix, income, expenses, and growth sections. That is all you need for an underwriting. Everything else below this section is for reporting purposes and to roll those values generated from above over time to generate your cash flows in your returns. We'll go ahead and start with the deal assumption section. Uh, and in this example, I'm gonna start with a feature of the tool called quick underwriting. This is located in the top right section. This is intended to be a feature to allow you to quickly analyze a value add deal to see if you wanna perform a full underwriting. Uh, I implemented this as a time-saving feature so I can underwrite a deal and know whether or not I think it will pencil out in about 10 minutes, maybe sometimes 15 minutes based on the broker's OM. And I'll show you that feature first. One thing to understand is that it is dependent on all the other input into this criteria section. So all of your purchase assumptions, your exit assumptions, your debt structure, deal structure, and some of the renovation information here is all required in order to perform a quick underwriting. The thought process behind this is that you'll know if you're underwriting deals in a certain region, you're gonna know pretty much off the top of your head what the cap rates are. If you're underwriting a lot of deals, you'll know what your closing cost estimates are, your operating reserves. And uh, oftentimes you'll know what your debt structure is likely to be uh, within reason. And when I go to underwrite a deal, first thing I ask from the brokers is if they prepared a debt menu or um, a term sheet, uh, which is basically a lot of the big brokerage houses when they list a property, they also have their financing arm prepare a term sheet for that property so they can give it to you uh, and it has some high level financing terms. And it's, it's a good starting point for underwriting these deals, especially for the quick underwriting. That said, I'll go ahead and turn the quick underwriting feature on by toggling the menu to on here and it it makes these available to you so in the same time that it makes this available for input it's going to gray out everything below you see for the unit mix it does the same thing for the input of the income section you see it's all grayed out and the reason for that is this quick quick underwriting what it is is it's using very high level assumptions around income economic vacancy, other income and expenses, and high level assumptions around your renovation, your proposed renovation strategy to generate the uh, returns. So we'll go ahead and walk through that. What I'll do is I'll split my screen. I get the most of this information directly off of the OM, knowing full well that the OM is gonna be best case scenario. So in this example, I have an OM here. Uh, let me scroll this over. I have an OM here and I know it's 254 units. The average square footage is 935. They're saying the average lease rent is 929. I will go ahead and put that in. Uh, there are also, uh, there are two values here that are estimates that, that you have to come up with. And that's your economic vacancy during renovation. Um, this comes from experience in, in underwriting. So in this situation, I know that 254 units are all classic uh, and that we're gonna model renovating 100% of those units over two years. And from experience, I know that's gonna generate a relatively high economic vacancy for this asset during that time. I'm gonna estimate that to be 16%. Typically it's anywhere around 15 to 16. Uh, there's a lot of variables that go into that. And then during stabilization, or once the property is stabilized, I'm estimating nine and a half percent. This property is in a little bit nicer of an area. Uh, it really depends on the class type, the area, um, as to what you think the stabilized economic vacancy will be. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and input the other income per year. So I'll show you, I get that directly from the OM. This is um, right down here. So from the OM, the other income per year, I usually use T3 other income. And in this case, you can see it's 1127. 
that matches exactly with what we have over here. Expenses per unit per year. I use the uh, T12 expenses in most cases. And you can see my T12 expenses, 51.44, and I put that in right there. Okay, so that's it for my income and expenses, really high level assumptions. And then what I can do is I can use the OM and some emails I've had with the broker to estimate my renovation. And so if I go up to his OM and I look at page seven, they're estimating there's about a $400 difference between what is in place and what the comparable average is. Again, as I mentioned, we're going to renovate 254 units, 100% uh, renovation we're going to model. Uh, I don't feel totally comfortable with a $400 renovation increase. I'm just going to put 350 as a placeholder. That's a pretty sizable increase. And then a renovation cost per unit based on the unit mix and size, I'm just going to estimate super high level that it's $9,500. And then that's it. That's all I have to do. And you can see at the very top, let me go ahead and move this over again. At the very top, I have these indicators that are always visible as you underwrite your deal. And you can see my cash on cash is about 8.6 AAR, 19%, 16% IR, almost a 2X equity multiple. This still looks great. Knowing that I took these values from the OM, I'm, I'm virtually guaranteed that it's going to be on the high side. But I'm now I'm curious, I want to fully underwrite this deal to see where my full underwriting is going to come in relative to these. And as while we're on the topic of this uh, quick underwriting, I have fully underwritten the deal in the model already. And I want to show you this feature of quick underwriting before we move on. The quick underwriting done, I have to turn this off to be able to fully underwrite the deal. I'll turn it off and then I'll go through, I'll underwrite the deal, and I can come back here and I can compare my underwriting, my full underwriting versus the quick underwriting. And in this case, I can see that my average market rent was 992 in my full underwriting versus 929. And the reason for that difference is I actually calculated the average market rent based on the rent roll and not the OM. So I found it was higher and I used that value. And then uh, based on my analysis, my economic vacancy during renovation is actually a little bit lower. So that's a plus. My stabilized economic vacancy came in a little bit higher. Uh, other income per unit is pretty darn close. And my expenses are significantly higher. And I know because I underwrote this deal that I'm now factoring it for a, a tax assessment in year one. And that's driving up most of my expense increase in year one. Uh, and then in the variance column, I highlight anything that's greater than plus or minus 5%. So you can kind of see where the big deltas are. Uh, my rent premium for renovation, I did a rent comp analysis. I feel more comfortable around 315 per unit on a renovated units versus the 350 in the quick underwriting. So it gives you a nice little comparison. And as you do more of these, you'll get better and better at your quick underwriting and estimating your values. Okay, that is it for quick underwriting. I like the deal, and now I'm going to perform a full underwriting in the model, and I'll show you how each section works.